Good morning, everybody. YC is live here in 96 South Carolina for their Festival of Stars starting today, and it goes in through uh, Saturday. We're doing our zip trips all summer where we're taking you to different places that maybe you've seen on a map, maybe you've been interested in visiting. We're going to uh, tell you a little bit more about the town that has a historic, uh, a historic uh, story behind it uh, related to the Revolutionary War. That festival is the 14th annual, so we're going to be giving you a little taste of some of the different vendors that you'll be able to interact with here. Uh, some of the history and, uh, and of course just a little bit about the town. We have Sam the Clown on which I know Jack would be particularly happy about. Uh, but I know Megan you are holding it down in the fort and uh, in downtown Greenville. Good morning to you Megan. Hey to Marcus. Good to see you. It's lonely and kind of quiet here without you boys. I know we usually bring the party, but the party is happening here in, in 96. So such a historic and a, and a beautiful spot. So we can't wait to tell you a little bit more uh, about it. Uh, the Ferris wheel, I think, is going. All the games and rides are going to be going on a little bit later today. They have a legendary fireworks show that's coming up on Saturday, 9.45 p.m. It, I've read about it, and it says it's one of the, the biggest fireworks shows in the southeast. So 96, they know how to throw a, a big party here for the, uh, the Festival of Stars. I love it. I wonder what makes like the best fireworks show. You know what I mean? Because I feel like anytime you see fireworks, you're like, ooh, that's really good. So what do they do or that other people aren't doing? I don't know. That that's the that's the big question. I think it may be just like the the pure volume of how many fireworks they they have here. And of course, with that Revolutionary War uh, history of being like one of the first battles in the South of the Revolution, they know how to how to do it, it big here. They have uh, you know Star Fort down here, which is uh, managed by the National Park Service. Uh, some of it has kind of be, been recreated, but a lot of it is original. You know, so really cool to be able to have that history. They're close to Lake Greenwood, so if you're looking for something to do on the weekend, a great. Uh, great acre, uh, 11,000 acre lake that you can enjoy there too. So lots of things going on. One of the interesting things too was, uh, you know, there are lots of vendors around here with all the fair foods that you would enjoy. Um, and you can actually bring some things for them to fry themselves. So if you have something at home that you like, you know, I wonder if this would be deep, good deep fried. They can make it happen here at the Festival of Stars. That is so funny. Now, you know, yesterday I was in Tryon covering the professional bull riding stuff. And I feel like I may have heard you and Jack talk about fried broccoli. Was I hearing wrong? Were you talking about fried broccoli? Yes, Jack was mentioning the fried broccoli, and I had never really heard of like deep fried broccoli. But so it's kind of you know kismet the fact that I'm here right now, and they're like, yeah, you can bring whatever you want, and we'll deep fry it. So if only I just had some broccoli from Ingalls in my car, I would have gotten that thing deep fried. Maybe there's a store around here that I can do that. So to get it, to get it done. Remember the other day we were talking about uh, tomatoes and tomato sandwiches and stuff. Do you realize I've had one for lunch every day since we talked about that? I found two of the best ones. They weren't the heirloom like you like, but they're just the big old <laughs> red ones. So every time I eat it, it makes me think of. Yeah, we like a big classic red tomato. I'm a big fan of the heirloom. But you, you got me to thinking, like, what if we deep fried tomatoes? I mean, we obviously do it with green tomatoes, but how would a red tomato taste deep fried? I mean, would it, I guess it's the same thing, but it's a little sweeter. I don't know. Probably, probably delicious. Like, I would definitely try it. <laughs> I, I, I see that um, one of our, our crew people has barbecue and they're like tempting in front of my face. So I'm going to bring this in because look how amazing this looks. I mean, they, they do food big down here in 96. I mean, we got a little mac and cheese and you can mm. tell that didn't come from the box. You got the beans <laughs> no. and I'm not sure what's in the beans, but we'll ask, uh, we'll ask them coming up. And of course, the, the ribs, delicious. So mm. if you're looking for something to do, definitely come down here today and tomorrow for the Festival of Stars. Megan, you hungry yet? Yeah, I mean, we can take a little break and watch you eat the ribs. I know how much you love eating ribs on live TV, so I can sit real quietly if you eat a little, <laughs> little, little bite to eat. We'll save the live eating of the ribs for the actual segment with the barbecue vendor here because, you know, I love to let them talk and let me eat. <laughs> secret, secrets. Well, Jay, you know, like I said, you know, I was gone most of the day yesterday in North Carolina, and when I came back, I noticed a lot of our neighbors along Main Street were without power. Do you hear about all of that? I mean, for like till 7 o'clock at night, a lot of these businesses were without power. 
Yes, I know my friends at Poppy's Tacos, Halls, mm -hmm. Chop House, they all had to close yesterday for dinner service because they didn't have power. So I was driving through downtown uh, yesterday afternoon, right when that started, I noticed the big uh, fire and police presence and the, the stoplights were out. So it was uh, a lot going on. And with this heat, it is not a good time to not have power. And those businesses need all of the business they have, especially coming off the pandemic. Yes, we'll be sure to go back today and revisit. But, you know, I was telling all my friends that weren't on there, I was like, I'm so sorry this happened to y'all. And then I'm not kidding. Last night at 8.52, guess whose power went off until 2.10 a.m. Oh, no. Yes, for the second night in a row, Jamarcus. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, that... that I, I can't I cannot imagine. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. one of those those things. It's like you get real creative when you when you don't have power. I know. Well, that's why it made me think of today's question of the day because I was so hot and I was like, mm. and we were talking about this too. Some homemade <laughs> ice cream would be good. So you guys go to our Facebook page, answer this morning's speaks question of the day. We want to know if you're making homemade ice cream, what flavor are you making? I would probably do strawberry, but I wouldn't be mad at some peach. Yes, I love a peach, anything peach, especially right now, peaches, everything peaches. <laughs> All the peaches. Is it hot in 96 right now or is it kind of, it felt pleasant coming in this morning, a little breeze. It's not bad. We have a little uh, cloud cover, so it's not uh, you know as warm as it as it could be. But it's uh, it's 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 a little toasty out here. I should start wearing shorts because you never see my legs anyway. And and also Fred Cunningham, he's a, a veteran of of Seven News, so if he can wear shorts, Jamarcus Gasson can wear shorts. I declare next Friday you wear those shorts. Let them fly, J Man. Let them fly. <laughs> you and Jack and I are going to wear shorts. If we can get Jack Roper to wear shorts, then we've done something. You've done something right. You've done something right.